all for Yaroslav the Wise. Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about the Putin Tucker Carlson interview tonight on the show. Stick around and listen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. I hope you all saw the Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin interview. It was fascinating, wasn't it? It was rather two, inter two hours of very interesting listening. Um, obviously, the first half hour was, you know, all about Russian history. You know, we got to hear about wonderful people like Yaroslav the Wise, who I've dedicated this report for Tiger Mountain to. We went right back a thousand years into Russian history, right back to some, I uh, can't even remember his name, but come some kind of like Scandinavian dude who came over and founded Russia. Good on him, I say, good on him. And then, you know, of course, this led to people like Yaroslav the Wise, and then, you know, it went through, you know, ancient, you know, Russian history to medieval Russian history to modern Russian history and of course we got on to the you know founding of the Soviet Union and then we got into you know World War One and World War Two and we heard all about World War Two from Putin's perspective. I mean I think you know people in the Western world were sitting there. I can imagine millennials and Gen Z if we watched the interview. Going, what in the name of God is he talking about? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, our countries, particularly older countries like Russia, have a long history. You know, and it's fascinating. We should all know our history. If you uh, countries like England have an even longer history, Australia only has a history of about 250 years. But you know, I mean, the Aborigines um, have a history here. Um, uh, they didn't record it, so we don't really know what happened. But they have sort of like myths and legends and things, I guess, through which some of the historical narratives might be, you know, sort of, uh, you know mentioning or like uh, like a pathway for what happened there you know we don't really know you know it's hard to interpret isn't it a lot of aboriginal history but like um you know uh, putin i thought was fascinating the way he spoke and uh, tucker carlson sat there for the first half hour sort of going what the hell is he talking about but you know i mean i guess he was making the point and i think it's a point made by the russian intellectual alexander dugan you know who is a kind of russian nationalist and um is a kind of one of the advisors uh, to putin that you know russia does have a long history and not only that that ukraine has been a part of russia throughout uh, russian history and also not only that you know it seems like Putin is almost happy to accept an independent Ukraine, but it has to be a Russian-friendly Ukraine. It can't be uh, a, a, a Ukraine that's um, hostile to Russia due to the relationship between the two countries. And obviously, you know, Ukraine has been fairly friendly towards Russia since the end of... Um, uh, World War II, uh, often because it you know, had no other choice uh, under the Soviet rule, obviously, under the Soviet Union, uh, where it was pretty much occupied. But, like, you know, since the fall of the, uh, um, you know, Soviet Russia and the Berlin Wall and all this stuff, you know, I mean, there has been elements of independence has returned to Ukraine. But many of the leaders have, have sure they've been wary of Russia. They've at least been friendly uh, towards it due to the uh, proximity of the countries and also due to the trade routes. And, you know, obviously Ukraine is the breadbasket of, of Europe. So there's been a lot of trade, food, things like this. So you know, there's huge relations there. And the other issue that uh, Putin brought up after his history lesson was the issue of NATO. I mean, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, Gorbachev and Yeltsin were promised, um, you know, when the Soviet Union dismantled itself, is that NATO wouldn't expand east, um, which, of course, it has. I mean, NATO has just expanded its charter further and further east towards Moscow, to the point where the Russians are going, what the hell is going on? You know, I mean, so I believe NATO has been uh, weaponized as a kind of, um, uh, you know, globalist entity of aggression against Russia. And that's pretty much exactly what Putin says. Uh, and so, you know, obviously there was the coup in Ukraine in 2014. Putin talks about that. And he talks about how, um, you know, this was essentially a foreign coup funded by the CIA and also that, you know, foreign um, you know, people, often Jewish people, took over the government uh, in 2014 and then began to uh, um, attack ethnic Russians in the east of Russia, um, you know, in areas like the Donbass and stuff like this. And so this created the atmosphere, the kind of tender powder keg, um, you know, that launched the um, Ukraine war. And which is why, you know, I think Putin felt, you know, he needed Needed to invade. Putin didn't actually get on to, I guess, why he did invade until about an hour into the interview. Anyway, it was really fascinating, and um, you know, I think you should all watch it. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on um, uh, Twitter, obviously. Um, it's on X, uh, so check it out there. But I, I thought, you know, it was good to hear um, Putin, and I'm glad Putin sort of just 
took the time to explain the whole situation, to explain the, um, you know, the elements of Western aggression and you know, the role of the Zionists in this war. Um, so, you know, I thought it was fascinating. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, I'm quite supportive of President Putin. I mean, I don't love the guy. I mean, obviously, he's not an angel. I mean, I don't know. I don't think anybody in the West who's right wing, who supports Putin, thinks he's an angel. He's not an angel. But like, you know, I think he was provoked and, uh, you know, Personally, I think the whole point of the Ukraine war is to sink Europe into another bro brother's war because obviously this is what, you know, our dear friends uh, who I won't name necessarily uh, love because they love World War One because that helped kill Europeans and they love World War Two because they helped kill Europeans on all sides, ladies and gentlemen, on all sides. And, you know, they would like um, the situation in Ukraine and the government who runs Ukraine clearly doesn't give a, a shit about the people of Ukraine and they've run out of young Ukrainian men to kill and you know they, they, they're resorting to you know teenage boys and uh, old men and obviously unless the war escalates where they start bringing in troops from other NATO nations in the area which are Poland and Romania and uh, you know even up in Finland and Sweden recently joined NATO so you know it's all a bunch of bullshit ladies and gentlemen um, so this is what I think Putin was trying to explain and what we're told in our Western media is a bunch of propaganda. So, you know, you should ignore it and you should uh, subscribe to RT, which is the Russian news network. I mean, you know, it's not always spot, spot on. I mean, obviously it has a pro-Putin bias, but, you know, I mean, Western media has a pro, um, you know, other interests bias. And that's our entire media, every single um, channel. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's my analysis of the uh, Putin and Tucker Carlson interview. Go check it out and also watch um, Tucker's uh, sort of adventures where he you know, looks into like supermarkets and he looks into the subway system and how um, Russia has a much better civilization than much of America these days. So that's quite extraordinary as well. So check it out. And that's the report for Tiger Mountain for this week.